<laughs> the sticky is holding because I pressed it down really, really hard. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Good morning. Hello, everybody. Good morning. <coughs> Excuse me as I <sighs> reposition. Welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow. The VOC edition today. See, look, right there. It's actually sticking. It wasn't sticking before, and I pressed down really hard on it. I'm going to have to make a new sticky soon. Because it's a new sticky. Because special effects. No, not this. No. Ooh. That's Tuesday and Thursday. This is Wednesday. We have a high budget here. <laughs> um, I make, we do. We go through sticky notes like nobody's business. <laughs> I, I make a new sticky, not once a week. I make a new sticky when I can't find the old stickies. And sometimes when they don't stick. Every other week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome. Oh my gosh, look, there's so much yarn you almost can't see. I haven't blocked this yet. I think it's going to lay better when I block it. This is the Break in Tide Cowl by Tiff Nealon. I started another project of hers last night, which I'm going to show Not you today. And um, I still need to finish this and make a tassel. But that might not happen till the weekend. And then again, we have sit and stitch on the weekend. So we'll see. Okay. So anyway, hi. <laughs> um, I'm trying to decide where I want to wear this. I'm getting there. I know I still have to do introductions, but I'm trying to figure out how I want. Ugh, I should just wait till it's blocked and not worry about it. Okay. I'm Rebecca. I'm the <laughs> owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in um, sunny and muggy and gonna get hot Brevard, North Carolina. Liz. I'm the minion there. It was it was all doom and gloom and rain at my house, or like, like it had just finished raining at my house, and it's not like that down here, in town. So, yay mountains! But we we are in that time of year where it could rain across the there's, street and not here. There's or, and there's a really good chance that it will rain um, between two and three. Yeah, almost every afternoon for a while. Yeah, and when it doesn't, we're surprised. So. But it's um, raining somewhere here. <laughs> somewhere in the area. Yes, it will be raining. All right. So um, we have two yarns we're going to talk about today. Well, kind of three. Two brands. There's two different bases. Oh, she was confused. I confused Liz. I'm sorry. Um, okay. I'm easily confused today. <laughs> I'm easily confused all week. I, I still have my coffee here. I put my coffee in the big poly um studio mug at home which is like more than a cup of coffee yeah and so i had to bring in the leftovers because there's no way i was drinking that all this morning at home after filming morning meditation actually it's a really good cup of coffee anything less than that's like half a cup of coffee i just use my normal size mugs this is this is like the, the, the Polly's coffee mug are extra large mugs. They're great. And mine says knitting is cheaper than therapy. And I once had a customer say, well, that depends. So, <laughs> um, no, I, I drank some and then the leftover filled this Yeti mug. So, wow. Yeah. And it's still warm. And that was like a long time ago. That was like an hour and a half ago. So. Yay, Yeti. Okay. Um, I did nuke it before I tossed it in the Yeti and ran out the door because, you know, it takes me a while to drink my coffee. Okay. So, so Don't we. Your appropriate food and drink, what? <laughs> Temperature appropriate is relative to the person. Thank you very much. Yes and no. <laughs> moving on um it's the vsc so to preface this we are gonna we're using the vsc to highlight a project i started last night and yarn that was delivered from a local dyer um yesterday and yes if you use the code product of the week these will be 15 percent off because they are in our product of the week category hopefully by the time i publish this but as i impromptu decided yesterday since we, we hit our 200th filming, you can save more by using the code we talked about yesterday, which I will mention, but not right now, because then people will stop watching. It happened yesterday. I'm diabolical. <laughs> um, 
remind me before the end of the show, I've got to say the code again, because we're not writing it in the comments. It's only if you watch, maybe we'll put it in the middle or maybe, I don't know, probably at the end. So, you know, you could just fast forward to the end, but what fun is that? Come on, okay. It's the most dangerous show of the week today. Look, so you can't even see be my fun. coffee behind the mountain of yarn. It is a dangerous show, we have been told. Um, where, so let's start with all the yummy spunky sheep because that is what you can see, what's keeping you from seeing my coffee. Ooh, okay, um, it's almost that color purple, but this color purple is even brighter. That's fun. So Spunky Sheep, Julia of Spunky Sheep, she's our other local dyer. Both of our local dyers are from South Carolina, but believe it or not, that is local to us because we are, we are a stone's throw from South Carolina. We're like right on the border in Western North Carolina. So we have a couple of people up here, but more often than not, we have, oh, did I not give us time to get ready? No, no, I'm just pulling just out so you can stuff. Okay. Um, show more off often than different. not that we're closer to South Carolina. We're close to Asheville and South Carolina. There you go. It takes 45 <laughs> minutes to get to Asheville and 45 minutes to get to Spartanburg. So yeah. Equal distance to civilization in both states. So, um, <clears throat> And, pe and it's really fun when telemarketers call, I'm vamping while she puts some stuff out. It's um, when telemarketers call and they're just like, well, you're 20 minutes from Asheville. And I'm like, what? Because they don't know the area and they see that we're like 20, 25 miles from Asheville, but we live in the mountains. You probably have to double, maybe not quite double, just about any mileage distance you see in terms of the amount of time it takes to get there. Because not only for Asheville, is it mountain driving? Then there's the highway. Once you hit the highway, it just sucks and you don't go anywhere. You know, so yay, traffic. Okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> I've pulled all the colors out in the two bases so that I can A, read them and B. Okay, we have one skein that's only in one base. That's all that's left. And it might be under there somewhere. No, it is. Riverstone? Oh, no, maybe. Let's it's not worry probably about it up right now. there. Let's not worry about it right now. It's probably up. it looks like the, the pecan, but um, but it's not or pecan, whatever. I might dig for it later or I might not. Or you'll just have to see when I post it online. So, okay, so here's what Spunky Sheep did. <clears throat> I told her um, we had these lovely variety packs, which are not part of the sale because they're already reduced price, as Liz pointed out to me when we we're getting ready to film. Um, the four packs. And I had knit mine up in the stay out of the forest shawl, which is up there and I haven't gotten down. So, um, but um, I thought, wouldn't it be great to have some singles of things? And when she made the variety packs for us, their sport weight, I think I might've already mentioned, but I'll say it again, because we don't have a whole lot of hand dyes in sport weight, um, limited quantities. But when she did the four packs, she did two different bases of sport weight for us. Sport weight's becoming really popular. And, and we'll keep working on having that in stock, but we don't have a whole ton, especially in Superwash Merino, which everybody loves, not everybody, but a lot of people, very popular. Um, so she dyed us these variety packs in um, the luscious, super soft alpaca merino and silk blend, which is what my stay out of the forest shawl is in, and just straight up Superwash Merino, both sport weight, both, I believe the same yardage you're holding no. right there. No, actually the, Ooh. Alpaca, merino, and silk is 250 yards uh, per 100 grams, and the uh, superwash merino is 328. Which makes oh, me think. Nope. Which makes me think this is not actually sport weight. We're discovering this on camera because it, I'm pretty sure that my my ones were, were not 250. They were my ones that were um, sport weight that I made that out of were the 328 yards. So I might have to check with her on that. It might mean that it's not sport weight, the alpaca merino and silk. What, what you what you doing? Are you checking the packs? The packs I think are different. So um, we will check with her because I, they were all supposed to be sport weight, yep. but what? It's the same on the, the pack. That's, oh my gosh, that's why I swear the ones that I did my thing out of said it was, it was 300 plus yards. So 
Um, it, it could be because the alpaca is heavier. Yes. Than um, and the silk, you know. My sticker things might, that might be why I ran short on that then. But I swear that, or my recollection is there was more yardage on the skeins she gave me to play around with. But um, we're pretty sure these are all sport weight, although 250 yards for 100 grams sounds more like a DK, but I bet it could be used for either. All this, all this, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> when I put up the listings, I'll put what she put on the labels. Um, the different bases take color differently. That is what I was going for before we have discovered like, what is going on with these yardages? I don't know, I'm gonna check with her. Um, but what I think is really cool is that the dye takes differently. It's more tonal. And for some of these colors, it's softer in the alpaca merino and silk, tonal and softer. For some of them, it's brighter. It's, it's, it depends on which color and which dyes she's using. I think in any case they're more they're more tonal. There's little pops of it. It doesn't absorb as evenly as with the superwash merino, but that's a cool look. A lot of people are going for. So I will be very careful with my pictures um, to try to represent that as much as possible on the listings. But Liz has piled them up here with one of each base, so we can kind of show you as we show them off. I will read. What's going stats. on? Hang on before you do. Yeah, I'm always interrupting her. Um, we have two skeins of each color in each base, which means like, like this, this red we'll talk about in a minute. We have two skeins of it in this, in the superwash merino and two skeins of it in the alpaca merino and silk. If you want larger quantities than that, you're gonna have to do a special order with us. Contact the shop. Stats, please, thank you. We have on the superwash merino base, it's 100 grams, sport weight, 328 yards, wash, tepid water, <laughs> mild wool wash, lay flat to dry. On the- Wash on delicate. Yeah. You know. On the uh, happy, to happy be safe soft wash. face. Yeah. Uh, baby alpaca, 45%, 40% merino and 15% silk. 100 grams sport weight gets you yeah. 250 yards. Does say sport weight on the label. Okay. Yep. But there's not as much yardage there. Wash with tepid water and mild wool wash, lay flat to dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a different animal fibers, way different amounts kind of thing. This is a great example of how what's considered the same thickness is not necessarily going to get you the same yardage. So, um, but like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to check with her because I don't remember that being on the labels that I had of my, of what I played around with, but it's on the labels in there. I don't know. Um, that means I need to change some things with my listings. I'm going to get over that and we're going to talk about colors. I was looking for my phone and I was just on my phone before we started filming. What happened to my phone? Okay. Um, you guys don't care about that. So, so colors while she's looking for her phone. This is a nice, warm, buttery yellow called bubbly it could be a champagne yellow mm -hmm. i would what this one is the superwash merino and this one's the baby alpaca merino and, and silk that's one of the examples of regardless of what i just said the merino actually looks softer than um the alpaca silk and everything but the al the alpaca silk and merino is more tonal yes still. It's still this more one's tonal. more tonal this one's softer I don't know if that holds up across. It doesn't. The... It's um, and a lot of them, it's like like this one. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So strawberry is brighter on the superwash merino, and but more tonal on the um, alpaca merino and silk. So this is the alpaca merino and silk. It's softer. I don't know. I'll find it later. It's okay. probably behind your computer. Why would it be there? What is I, it? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm squirreling. I need to. Strawberry. Strawberry. Again, the softer one is the is is the squishier one with the yeah. alpaca, right? Mm -hmm. This time, last time it was the. Okay, disco purple. It's like who can guess which one's the superwash merino, which one's the alpaca? Well, we're holding them in the same order, so you know. Um, the softer one is the one with the alpaca. There's a, this one's, this one's got some tonality to both. Like I'm seeing some fun tonality on the back of this one, but the vibrant one is the Merino. 
in some of the darker colors, I think that's what happens. Um, there's a softer palette with the squishier yarn. We have pecan brown, softer in the alpaca, merino, and silk. Still pretty tonal in the other one, though. No. Yeah, so maybe my rules about the tonal, I don't know. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Um, this one is called Nanny. Bright pink, gotta love it. The alpaca, merino, and silk is the softer one. Again, on camera, it may not show up very much, more vibrant. But this one, the vibrant superwash merino by itself is a more solid color. And this one's a little more tonal. Check the pictures out. I will try to represent the color as best I can in the pictures. Watermelon lemonade, the softer is the alpaca. It's like a, so it's like a salmon-y pink yeah. kind of. Yes, the softer one, the bolder color is the merino by itself. And the softer one is the alpaca blend. Do I get to do one? Ooh. Okay, this is called Sapphire. It's blue, it's Sapphire. The softer one is the alpaca, merino, and silk. Did we do we say prices? No, because these no. aren't stickered yet. I will say prices in a second. I'm losing the tag. Okay, and then the bolder color, they're both a little tonal. The bolder color is the 100% merino. Turquoise. The bolder color is the 100% merino. Yep. The softer squishy. Yep. yep. They're both kind of tonal. This one's a little bit more tonal. Mm -hmm. yep. It's it's hit or miss. And Ooh. last but not least, we have parakeet. Parakeet. It's like really super bright. And I'd say th this one's just a tad softer, but they're really. That's such really a vibrant color. I, I I do think the stronger color is the superwash merino. Like even hold even on the unedited film right now, I can tell when it's softer. But they're they're intense, yeah. which is really cool. It's like green. And there's one skein of what's called Riverstone. And we're looking for, no, that's, you found it? Okay. Riverstone was ordered, shout out to Lisa. And we only have one left because she got four. Um, and, you know, if we had two, that'd be wonderful. It's more of a greeny brown. It's really pretty. We'll see. I mean, if this turns out to be super popular, we will get more. Um, and this is in the superwash merino, so the color is a little more intense. So the superwash, if I remember off the top of my head, and oh wait, the stickers are right here. <laughs> we haven't stickered them yet. Um, the superwash merino is twenty-seven seventy-five, and uh, no wait, these didn't print. Some of these didn't print out right. The river stones we got to reprint. Twenty-seven seventy-five. For some reason, those printed out at the old price, oh. and I didn't fix it, um, or the the pre-order price. But you know, never mind. <laughs> the um, merino alpaca and silk is twenty-nine ninety-five. So it's it's only about two dollar difference between the extra super fancy squishy, and the straight up super wash. And for some people, that will be a fiber choice, and for some people, that will be um, a a budget choice. And you know, it's all good. So that's the first yarn we wanted to show off for y'all today. And can you imagine like just making a combo of these? Oh my gosh, look at how pretty. <sighs> Dual tones. Yay on Easter. Easter. The blue and the green and the pink Easter. and the purple. It's springy, only it's neon. Okay, if you throw the yellow in here, maybe. <laughs> no, everyone's gonna have their own idea of what to do with these. Again, reminder, we only have two of each base in each color. Get them while you can. So come to the shop to see them in person. We can even bring them outside if you don't have an appointment because I do lessons in the morning on Wednesdays. So, and this won't be published till the afternoon probably anyway because of upload and download in sideways times. So, um, so that was the first yarn we wanted to talk about today. And the second yarn is one of our cottony plant fiber blends because I started a sweater in it. Yay. A new project. What? Um, I started here. Let me get my a gauge swatch last night. I said, if I finish this, I wanted to start another project. And I showed this off on my phone last night and, or yesterday when I filmed, but now I've got a printed pattern. Yay. Cause I bought the pattern. Um, Wisp Raglan. It is on Ravelry. Go get it by Tiff Nealon. 
And I decided with the help of Liz that I wanted to make it in, hang on, let me see. Dun, 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 dun. In Belviso, which is a plant fiber, I'm trying to, bunch of different plant fibers. And what I like about it so far, it's it's got some um, color work at the bottom, which will be in the blue, which is, what's the name of the blue? Beatrice. Beatrice. Yeah. And Cleopatra is this kind of green, funky color. I think it's going to stand out really well. It has little eyelets with the raglan seam increases only at like every other row and only in certain parts of it. It's going to be so pretty and it's so soft. The yarn we are advertising today is called Belviso by EYB. Your, your yarn's baby i think is actually what eyb stands for but it's not a baby yarn um it's just the euro yarns branch of knitting fever and um it is cotton and linen and nettle fibers it's very close liz is going to read the actual stats it's very close to um plymouth used to have a yarn called nettle grove that also had a little bit of silk in it this doesn't but it's wonderful and soft and it's actually like they're calling it a fingering weight. I'm using it as a sport weight. I'll talk about that in a second, but it, it's just, it's got lovely softness, but also structure. And I think it will be great for this top. I think it's really great for tops. Nettle Grove came in 50 gram balls and these are hundred gram twisted skeins. Take it away, Liz. It is 60% cotton. 28% linen and 12% nettle fibers. Which is all just plant stuff. People go, yeah. nettle, what? It's another plant fiber. It's hand wash. Uh, 100 grams will get you 394 yards. Tons so of it's yardage. kind of like the more dense the fiber, the less yardage. The, you know. Yeah, because they're, they're calling it a fingering weight. But it's got just a little less yardage than, say, fiber space. Yeah. Um, it is, they're calling it a, a number one super fine. A uh, suggested needle gauge is a US one to three. Crochet gauge, Teeny, tiny. they're saying a B to an E. And what are we retailing it for? We are retailing it for twenty six fifty. Okay. Um, which, you know, if you break it down to, um, that's about $13 or so for 50 grams, which is really close. The, the Nettle Grove was about that price. It was between 10 to $13 a skein. Um, but Plymouth stopped making it. So, so a couple of things. Um, teeny tiny needles. And those of you who have watched the show in the past may remember that this lovely color, I said, when we first advertised it and threw it up online, I said that this is the Cleopatra that I was going to make a top out of it, of what came with the yarn, like what, what knitting fever was advertising to go with the yarn. I don't even think I have the, the picture here. It was on like a, a two I think I was getting gauge on it and it was this, it was this open work weave like throw over top and with a really wide boat neck and something I was never going to wear like with a drop shoulder. So it was really wide. And I, I was like, I decided I was just going to make the smallest size I could to get it done. And I got this far into it and stalled out because I have so many other projects, but look how much I've gotten done on this one already. Cause I we paired the Cleopatra up with the Beatrice. Mm -hmm. We'll show you the other colors in a second. I think this is the best combination for the Cleopatra, for which you know we have a ton of this right now. I, I think the green will go with other colors. Yes, and but, we could put together yeah. kits. Yeah, maybe if we have time. We had no time yesterday to photograph, kit, do anything. We'd start and then, and then life. Life. Um, but what I do want to point out is this is written for a sport weight. This is technically a fingering weight by the label. We have a lot of customers who come up and say, but this says it's a four, but this says it's a two. You can play around with that. Um, the interesting thing is I thought since it was thinner, I would have to be on the same needle, if not a bigger needle to get the gauge. The gauge is um, 18 stitches for four inches. So I tried it on an eight, which is supposed to be the main needle for this. Again, the label is just read said, use a one, two, a three. That's a suggested needle. They're, and they're recommending a gauge of 27 to 32 stitches. Like teeny tiny stitches. I, I tried it on an eight. It looked kind of wonky and I was getting more like 16 stitches, which makes no sense at all. Which is why you have to test your gauge because if you change up the yarn you're using from the yarn a pattern's written for, you don't know what's gonna happen until you test. 
So I ripped that one out and I said, well, let me just jump down two needle sizes because I know I need to lose, a, lose at least two stitches over four inches. And it might have worked on a seven, but I tried it on a six. I, I was happy with how my stitch definition was coming out and the measurement was really close. It might be a little bit smaller, but it was really, really close. So I said, I think I'm comfortable with this. And first of all, when you're knitting on like a six, progress, I did stay up too late last night, but progress. And um, I used, I had to go down to a four for the ribbing for the collar. And the feel of this is just lusciously soft. It's gonna be a little see-through, but I think anything, especially with a plant fiber and on this size needle, unless you do a really thick yarn, which won't be fun, comfortable, is gonna be a little see-through because plant fiber doesn't have as much give to it. But um, it just goes to show you don't have to st stick with the needles on the label when picking the yarn for a project, in my opinion. And you know, Liz, always goes bigger. But this is luscious and it's really interesting to me right now. So maybe I'll get it done. But again, all my other sweaters on needles are going to be sad and say, why aren't you knitting us? So I'm gonna have to try to share the love. But let's talk about colors. So we have this lovely blue. The blue is very close to a color of um, and they're, Nettle Grove. They're heathered. They're, they're like heathered, stonewashed, you know, there's- They're really cool. There's white fleckies in just about every color. So Cleopatra and Beatrice, the green and the blue. <laughs> they're mostly named after women. And some of them are Shakespearean women and then a couple are not. So it's, I don't know. We have Mona Lisa, which is a nice neutral. It's a nice neutral creamy color. Creamy. There is one available that's more of a white that we have not brought in. We have a limited color palette in this. So what's that one? Rosalind, I think. Yes. I don't Rosalind know. They can't see. is a pink. It's a it's a pretty bright pink, but it's mixed with the white. So so it's toned down, yeah. you know, it's an intense pink, but it's got the heathery is gonna make it not as intense. So Ophelia is a purple. It's a light lavendery purple. I do really like that. I'm gonna to return to what I'm knitting in just a second. Once we get um, Juliet. Juliet. We have issues with. Well, not issues we have, with. We like it. Okay, show the color. It's orange. I'm like, dude, they don't even. It's know. the last it's, one we. It's have. the most. It's the most like like it. It's, it breaks away from the the total palette the most, which is probably why they discontinued it. But for people who like the orange and warmer colors, oh my gosh, why they discontinue it? We had Last a, one can't get any more. We had a we had a knitter and friend buy a bunch of them yesterday, and we said, okay, we need to order more because we're down to one. We can't reorder that color. So if you like orange, get it now. You can make a nice cowl or something small out of it. We only have one left. We have a green and blue that's Carmella. Carmella will probably do a little bit of a stripey thing, which could be cool, but not everyone might want it. it it's the, one of the prettiest colors we have, but we always like to warn people it might stripe because some people won't be expecting that and might be unhappy if it happens. Uh, this one is Olivia. Olivia is, is the light gray. It's a light gray. It's kind of a blue gray. Yeah. And I mean, both of the grays have a have a bluish cooler tone to them. And Lady Macbeth. Lady is Macbeth is dark, dark and groovy. I almost wanted to do that, but it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have popped the same way that these did. Mm -hmm. I wanted to pick something with the grays, but we have so much of the Cleopatra and I do like green. So I'm doing the green. Um, what I wanted to point out about this is based on the yardage. Now, I don't know if this is gonna play out, but if we made kits, because it will take me forever to finish everything. Um, if we make kits, I might base it on the yardage and the pattern. And the yardage and the pattern for my size, I'm making a size five right in the middle. Very size inclusive this is. Um, because I'm doing a 48 inch finished bust and that's a size five. And I think it goes up to maybe like a size nine. Um, and those, those are not sizes you'll find in the stores. That's how they label them when they're making them here. So we're not talking about medium, extra large. We're talking about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you gotta look at the Based bust. Based on bust sizes. Yes. Um, we are here to help you figure out patterns and what size to make. But let me return to, based on the size, any size you make, the contrast color should only take, will take less than one skein. Far less, even the biggest size will take far less than one skein of yarn. The size five, they they have a cropped version and what she's calling a high hip version. And I might make it a little lower than high hip, we'll see. Um, 
should take less than two. Like I will only need two skeins, but won't that be cool? Because two, three skeins total of this to get a lovely summery top with a, with a shoulder that, or, or a sleeve that looks like it's almost a half, half sleeve length, which I think is really great because there are all these summer tops that really, as soon as you separate the sleeves, they end there. And for people who are not happy about their upper arms, we should all be happy about all parts of our body, but sometimes we want to hide certain parts of, and even in the summer. So it has a sleeve that comes down, you know, to a classic t-shirt length, almost like half length sleeve. Still is, should only take me three skeins of yarn total and I'll probably have leftover. And I think that's pretty awesome because sometimes a summery top will take you like four skeins of yarn, five more. You just never know. But um, with this open weave, it should be wonderful and light and summery. And I'm so happy. And my it's other projects, my other projects are, are just like, but suffering. But you said we, you loved us. And I do. I just have too many on needles. So the Bell Viso has been advertised as well. Oh, look at the time. Um, <laughs> product of the week with spaces gives you 15% off on these two items. And um, the bigger discount though, until next Tuesday, this product of the week code will still be valid next Tuesday, but up until next Tuesday, because we hit 200 episodes and we're so excited about that, Sideshow 200 with no spaces will save you 20% online. And only you guys have heard it. And only if you're up to date on our videos. Yeah, not right? telling anybody else. We're not putting it else. in newsletters. We're not putting it in social media. So watching us, you get fun discounts. And remember, we're going to have a bigger discount if we can hit 600 subscribers. We still have 69 subscribers to go on that. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. If you've subscribed, um, tell your friends and neighbors too. <laughs> if you know they might anybody actually enjoy that's watching a us. knitter or crocheter, mm -hmm. subscribe because, you know, discounts, yarn, yarn toss. Subscriptions yarn. get us closer to discounts. We're fun to watch, we think, and we will talk about things you want to talk about if you send us a Dear Becky and Lizzie letter which is what's going to happen tomorrow. Segue. Um, so at this point, if you want us to talk about it tomorrow, we already have two questions. So we may or may not have time for more, but you can email. Liz at sundragonartandfiber.com. All spelled out. Um, and uh, if, if we don't have time tomorrow, we'll get to it next week. If you'd like to write us a letter, which we will get to next week because it won't get to us fast enough for tomorrow. You can write Dear Becky and Lizzie, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712. Tomorrow, so Dear Becky and Lizzie, we have a couple questions. I'm excited. I don't know if I'll be able to answer them well, but you know, we'll wing it. Um, Friday, we have another evening sit and stitch from 6 to 9 p.m. on Zoom with the shop phone number, which is 828-877. Three five five zero. I just realized as I was saying it, that's usually that's been Liz's thing lately. <laughs> Would you like to say the whole phone number again? Eight two eight eight seven seven three five five zero. Because we might have like confused people. I'm Probably. Sorry. I was okay. on a roll and I no, haven't taken another swig of coffee in a while. Um, this Saturday is super fun because it is Worldwide Knit and Public Day, and we will be yeah knitting from the safety of our homes. Um. <laughs> um and who knows, maybe I'll go out in my back porch. It's not really in public though, because my neighbors are not necessarily around on the weekend. But, um, and I don't know if the Wi Fi will work from out there, so never mind. But you can work, you can knit in public. And the whole idea of Knit in Public Day was to like advertise knitting and crocheting. And most it's Knit in Public Day, but crochet works in there too, obviously for me. Um, Last year was the, that was the first time because we weren't going to knit with lots of people around last year, especially, but that was the, for the kickoff of our Saturday afternoon, once a month, dual platform sit and stitch events. Say that six times fast. No. <laughs> and, and we started doing it once a month. And so I thought we'd celebrate on the anniversary. So we will not be here at the shop knitting in public. 
but we will be knitting with as many people who want to join us on Facebook Live or Zoom. Zoom, you get to see more than just me. Uh, you get to see Liz and other people who are joining us. And Facebook Live, you hear them. If you're on Facebook Live, you'll hear us. And you'll often hear Rebecca go, yeah, they can't see you waving on Facebook. Because we all go, hey! Because I will be like, oh, look, Donna is watching. And everyone will go, yee! And I'll say they can't see you. But, you know. Um, so please join us this weekend. There's like so many knitting thing, knitting and crochet things happening in our lives that you can share in this week. And then next week, we go back to a regular schedule and we are working towards by next Saturday, not this, not June 12th, June 19th, we're working towards having the shop have 10 to five hours on Saturday finally, but you will still need an appointment to come in. We are not lifting that restriction. We have so many people who come by and say, when are you gonna open? We're open. We've been open. We just are. We have always been helping people yeah. out and doing business. We're just not letting people wander into the shop without signing up first. It's that simple. We can help you outside. And we're really good at helping you outside. And it's so easy to sign up for an appointment. I, I really don't get sometimes the people who are like, I'm just waiting for you to open when it's so easy. It doesn't cost money. I don't know if somehow they think it will cost them money to enter the shop. It does cost you money if you buy things and we're hoping you will buy things, but it's not like you have to pay a fee to come in. You just have to sign up and it's really easy to do so. And we've had people, yesterday we had someone who was in town to drop her daughter off at camp and said, let me search yarn shops. And she found us and she signed up and she came in and it was great. It's so easy to do. There's no obligation it, that you come in the shop, you have to buy something. We hope you will buy something, but- It's a shorter shopping experience. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to come and hang out for hours and hours- Which we did in olden days and we yeah. love that, but that is not life right now. No. That is not life. Um, someday we might get back to a new normal where that happens, but it's gonna be a while. So, so just open to wander in and say hi, you're gonna have to say hi to us outside or sign up to come in and we will help you find lovely things. And we're very efficient at bringing stuff out. It is not a hardship for us. In fact, you're helping us out by helping me get steps <laughs> because, you know, I need steps. Mm -hmm. So Okay, we need to go. Yep. Um, but it's been great talking with y'all and sharing some stuff. And uh, we will be back tomorrow for Dear Becky and Lizzie. And we hope to see you, be it outside the shop or signed up to come inside the shop or virtually online. Stay safe, be well, and subscribe if you haven't already or like it, the, all those things that help the algorithm and help more people <laughs> discover the joy that is the Sun Dragon Sideshow, bye.